Hello guys, welcome or welcome back. I have been waiting to film this video for so long. As you can see, I'm gonna be talking about all of the books that I have read. Hold on, my TV is on. Do I have my remote? Okay. I'm gonna be talking about all of the books that I have read in December and January. I have decided to combine them because in December I was in a pretty big slump. I don't know if it was the holidays, school finals. I don't know what it was, but I did not read as much as I wanted to. I ended up reading a good amount, but not enough for like a full video. I never ended up filming it, whatever. It's just, this is where we are. I also wanted to do this because in January I'm reading a very big series that I'm gonna get to. So the whole month of January, I read one specific series and we'll get there when we get there but we're gonna start with December and the books that I read it was pretty long time ago especially December 1st that I was reading these books so I'm kind of I remember what I felt but I have it all written down on my computer just in case and look how many books we're gonna be talking about Ooh. but like I said one of them is a pretty big series so I'll explain what we're gonna do with that but okay starting off December I read Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo okay so this is my first dip into a fantasy genre I just saw this absolutely everywhere and I was like okay I think I need it to get into it. I bought this before buying the second one. It's a duology. The second one is Crooked Kingdoms because I didn't know if I was going to like it or not so I didn't buy the second one at first. And I posted it on my Instagram story and everyone was like, you have to read Shadow and Bone by her before you get into that. You have to watch the show or either or. Like either read it or watch the show so you can like understand and kind of grasp the concept. But I was like too late i bought the book i literally was about to start it when i posted it and i was like i asked some people because i didn't know i was like can i read this without like watching or reading the shadow and bone series and they were like yeah like you can it's just gonna be confusing so if you haven't read it and you don't read fantasy i would say you could just read this like i did but if you wanted to understand it more i kind of agree with saying probably watch the show i started it so i saw some of the characters that are in this book because they kind of mix six of crows and shadow and bone into the show and they're coming up the season two with characters more characters from the series but or this duology for me i didn't have to but i will say if you don't understand what's going on the first 200 pages are going to be brutal because i was trying to understand all the different settings and characters and there's like some types of magic ways and it was very confusing for me so after 200 pages i think that's what my slump was it took me so long to get through those pages because i did not understand what was going on but let me tell you when i got past those pages and i was like in the depth of the book and the characters i fell in love so basically it's about i don't know how to completely explain it but it takes place in ketterdam which is like a trading central kind of place and then the main guy kaz is part of the barrel which is like the slums and he just has his own little gang called the crows well he gets them together and puts them together and there's him Inej, which is kind of like the spy. Nina, who is the heart render. Sharpshooter, who is Jesper. And then you get you get into more characters, more people join in. But they basically have to go on a heist. They're told that they will get a crazy amount of money, which they're in the barrel, which is like the slums of the city. So they're all put together. They're all parts of different worlds, all put together, going to a heist. And at the end, they are all gaining something out of it. Doesn't sound too enticing coming from someone that reads contemporary romance, but trust me when I say it was so entertaining and there's little subplots of romance that really made it so worth it. I'm not kidding i was obsessed so i gave this a four out of five just because the first half it was kind of my fault that i didn't understand it i could have done some research and read the other series or watched the show but it was so so good and then after that i kind of want to take a break from fantasy and i did read a different book but we'll get to that after this one so in between six of crows and the duology the second one crooked kingdom i read a different book we'll get to that one right after but i read crooked kingdom eventually this one i gave a five out of five i sped through it i was obsessed because after reading six of crows you get the character you get their pasts and everything about them and the character development in these books is phenomenal you end up like falling in love with all of them also with the subplots of romance it doesn't sound cheesy like it would in like simple romance book the romance where it like gets thrown in is just so worth it so good the end of this book so worth it i would give up anything to just wipe my memory of this one and just be able to reread it for the first time again i said that this is one of my favorite friend groups and character groups within a book which is crazy for me because i've read a bunch of books where i loved the character so much but this like the group of people and the way they interact with each other and just like little hints of like humor and stuff like it was just so so good and then if you know how kaz is just like whatever the thief every time he like outsmarted someone or like you heard his plan and like it comes all the way after the, like you just realize something like kaz was just like so witty and smart i loved him so much it was just so good so i absolutely loved it like so much but in between those two books it was december so i did read the holiday swap by maggie knox now this was a book of the month book that i got it kind of reminded me of like a netflix holiday rom-com this one reminded me a lot of the princess 
princess switch without like the princesses and stuff this one i gave i think a three out of five i didn't love it i think because it was too slow whatever okay so she is on a baking show she is the host of it she's a baker and then at the hometown they live in a small hometown it's her twin sister who works at the family bakery she just runs it for the parents basically and they end up switching because something happens i think to the host of the show that twin she gets hurt and she can't do the baking show so they switch places so that whatever she's trying to win something with her co-host she hates her co-host and that's where i got kind of confused because i thought it was gonna be like an enemies to lovers with the one that was a celebrity host because she hated her co-host so i was like okay maybe this is like a little tension thing but it shouldn't end up like that was nothing to do with it like he was not part of the romance there was a whole other guy but basically they switch places they find love interests and then they have to like figure out what to do because they're like lying to them it's a great holiday book if you want to read this again not until december but it was really good it was really cheesy to me but it was like a simple read it just felt so much like the princess switch from netflix if you watch that with vanessa hudgens because those two people switch places too and love interests and stuff like that so it like i watched the movie so many times that it was like kind of repetitive a little bit for me like the, the storyline it, it wasn't like amazing book but it's definitely like a cute little holiday romance you know a good girl's guide to murder i read right after that this is by holly jackson very popular i have a reading vlog to this one so i'm not gonna say like too much the reading vlog does have spoilers so don't watch that if you have not read this yet i gave this a five out of five it was my first young adult murder mystery basically this girl pip is doing a capstone project on a murder that happened from a fellow student back in the day and it was it was pinned on her boyfriend who also died so it was just like cut off there but she wanted to get more into it and investigate it again because she thought it was like fishy and she thought that the boyfriend didn't do it so she basically goes through all the steps of how she kind of resurfaces the case but i really enjoyed it because it was fast paced it was easy to read you felt like you were solving everything with her it was an amazing 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 book and then the ending i didn't see coming i had so many different theories and predictions you'll see in the reading vlog if you watch it or if you did and i suspected so many people that just it wasn't so this was really really good but i'm not a big murder mystery girl like i do love a good murder mystery but it was a trilogy so i didn't like want to continue reading a murder mystery i wanted to get back into like a romance contemporary romance vibe but i did read the second one after i didn't film it this one was i think four out of five it was definitely really good the beginning was a little bit harder to get into because again i just didn't really want to read this genre anymore but i really liked the main girl pip she was a very likable character i like how fast paced it was this one was more modern time she started a podcast like really good i loved all the characters and now that you knew the characters from the first one it was just like things connected from the first book to this one and it's a whole different story this one was even crazier than the first if you could even believe it and it was really really good i'm not gonna say exactly what this is about because i feel like it would give too much away about this one but it's another mystery she's trying to figure out like another whole other thing so you go through it with her again it's just a fun read being able to keep predicting with her what's going on because she doesn't know either and it's like you're on the mind of her so i really liked that but by the time i got to the third one which is i had it good girl bad blood i didn't read it i started it and i got 50 pages in but i was like i just don't want to read any more murder mysteries i think i was just done with the series i said that was a good first two but i dnf that one my first book that i ever dnf so i'll get back to that eventually but i didn't read it and so many people were saying the third one is so good it's worth it it's worth the ending and all of that but i just personally i couldn't get into it so i'll get back to it eventually but the first two were definitely good reads they're very fast paced like i read them both in like i read the first one in like a day and a half and then the second one like two days because you like want to know what's happening but i just didn't want to read that genre anymore i was like kind of done with the story sadly and then the last book in december is the start of the big series i'm reading which is the addicted series so please don't give any spoilers or anything i read addicted to you which is part of the addicted series and then ricochet which is the second one addicted for now now we're going into january after that it gets into the calloway sister series so basically the addicted series is about a girl lily and lo lo is lauren part of two very wealthy families they are family friends so it's kind of like a friends to lovers type of vibe but they are both addicts so lily is a sex addict and then lo is an alcoholic so you kind of see like the ends of their addiction and stuff and how they enable each other and like it's really crazy Crazy. and then you get into the life of her sister so lily has three sisters there's poppy rose and daisy they're all different ages they all have different things going on in their lives and then her name's lily calloway so it gets into the calloway sister series so it goes into the sisters lives so i read kiss the sky and hot house flower of calloway sisters so technically you don't have to read the calloway sisters you can just read the addicted series which is this isn't all of it but you can read the addicted series and not the calloway sisters but if you're reading this you like want to read about the sisters and if you want me to be honest this one so far kiss the sky which is about rose is love interest please look at the cover let's not talk about that but that's been my favorite so far but even though i do love these books but you know what i mean i will say that the first one i don't know how to explain it It felt slow but fast at the same time like not a lot was going on because you were just kind of trying to connect with the characters understand the characters and their lives because it's such a big series so like you have to kind of understand the background of them which you do completely and you kind of see how they go about their lives and you kind of understand their addictions and stuff so that's like the first one i gave this a four out of five it wasn't like five out of five completely like in love with the series already so if you've read this book and
and you don't know if you want to read the rest of the series, definitely give the, at least the second one a chance. These covers are beautiful, by the way. They're my favorite covers ever. Beautiful. Definitely give the second one a chance because it gets more into them and it's pretty short, so at least try the second one. After I read the second one, I gave it a 5 out of 5. I would absolutely obsessed so then i read ricochet i liked it better than the first more invested and then you kind of get glimpses of the sisters and their lives so that's what really made me want to read the callaway sister series so that's what happened and then addictive for now is a pretty thicker one but it gets juicier and stuff like that i'm not gonna give too much away about any of the other books because once i finish the whole series i'm gonna do a whole video on literally everything about it so that's that i did read kiss the sky hothouse flower all of that and i am now on thrive so that's that i'm not going to speak about anything about these series because i want to do a whole Whole wrap up whole thing about it so you guys are just gonna have to stay tuned for that i don't want to give too many of my thoughts away but i am enjoying it so just stay tuned for that but i will say they are totally worth it so definitely give it a read give it a try if you have read it let me know don't give anything away because i am not done but i will say that i did read reminders of him in january so i have a whole reading vlog on that it's spoiler free but there are spoilers at the end so if you have read it then you have best of both worlds i guess on there so definitely read that to see all of my live reactions and stuff but i gave that a four to five i explained why and everything like that in that video so definitely check that out if you're wondering all my thoughts about reminders of him you guys know colleen is my queen i will read everything and anything she writes about so if you want to watch that i will link it down below i read it in a day but yeah that is everything i hope you enjoyed let me know if you've read these books your thoughts your feelings if you have any books you want me to put on my tbr anything like that just let me know everything down below i will see you guys hopefully in the next one bye